Finding the center of mass or the center of gravity of an object, whether that be a rod or a line or an area or a volume, requires a pretty good knowledge of the calculus involved. But once you understand that calculus, or if you have a good calculator, it's not too difficult. And that's what we're going over in this video. We're going over the equations and how to solve for the centroid or the center of gravity or the center of mass of a line. And so these equations that are involved with that is the equations for x bar and y bar. Now when you see an f bar over the x or y or in some cases z, um, that means the center of gravity or center of mass, centroid, they're all the same thing, but I'll just call them the center of gravity. Um, and then so you have the integral of the line um, and then the x, which is dx, the center of mass of the of all the x's um, in the whole object. And what it ends up being, what happens is it ends up getting replaced with x, or in this case, y for that equation. And then dl we have here, this is specifically for, um, for finding the center of gravity of lines and rods and wires, kind of one dimensional objects that might be bent or something. Um, so dl, this comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, if you're taking the integral with respect to x, you'll use this equation. If you're taking with respect to y, you'll use this equation, but they're both equal. So it doesn't really matter which one you use, just as long as you're doing the right one with the right variable. Um, so it's the square root of one plus dy dx squared. So that'll be, in this case, the derivative of the y function with respect to x. And in this case, with the derivative of, res of the x function with respect to y. And then you'll just plug those into the integral. So now we're going to solve for the center of gravity of this rod. And it is um, bent in the shape of the equation y equals 1 half x squared. So it is one foot in the x direction and a half a foot in the y direction. And so first we're just gonna start off by finding the um, center of gravity in the x direction. So that'll equal the integral of um, x, because that just gets replaced with x, and then dl. So here we have um, one plus the square root of dy dx. Well, to get dy dx, we have our equation y equals one half x squared. Well, if we take the derivative with respect to x, we can, um, this y becomes dy dx. And this side, when you take the derivative, it just becomes x. So this dy dx in here can be replaced with x. And then putting that equation into our integral, we have one plus x squared dx. And then on our bottom, it's just gonna be dl, which is this put in again. So one plus x squared dx. So, um, I'm not gonna do this by hand, but if I was, I would, with this one, I would um, use some U substitution and um, calculate it with this one. You can look up what it would be, and neither one of them are super easy. But um, we forgot to do the bounds of the integral. We're just going to go from zero to one on this, since that's the length of the rod. And so that's just gonna be zero and one, and zero and one. So. If you just, um, you can do it by hand or plug this into a calculator. Um, I'm not gonna go through the steps of the calculus involved, but this top one is 0 0.609. After plugging, calculating that integral on the bottom is 1.148. And then dividing that by that, you end up getting that this is 0 0.531. And so the center of gravity in the x direction of this rod is going to be 0.531 feet 
along the axis or away from this reaction or um, connection here. And so we'll just kind of label that with feet. So there's our X bar. Now our Y bar is going to be very similar um, with a little bit difference, the top integral. So our equation here is Y um, tilde and so that would be y in here. Um, and to do that, we would need to use this equation so that we could integrate with respect to y. But an easier way to do that is instead of plugging in y there, for y, we know that y equals 1 half x squared. So we can just plug that into it. Um, if we were going to do it the other way, we would need to find dx dy which would mean we need to multiply the two over the other side and take the square root. So we'd have the square root of two y, and then we take the derivative with respect to y, and it would just kind of get messy. Really, it probably wouldn't be a whole ton more difficult, but um, we will just plug in one half x squared four y in this case. And then once again, dl isn't gonna change going to be 1 plus x squared because we're using this top one again just like we did the other for our x bar. And then the bottom, it's not going to change. You can see here that these two are the exact same, so we can just plug this number back in. 1.148. So um, that's an even more complicated integral. You probably use integration by parts if you're doing by that by hand. But plug it into your calculator, you end up getting that this is 0 0.210 and the bottom is still 1.148. Plugging that into your calculator and you get that, that is 0 0.183. Once again, that is feet. So the center of gravity along the y-axis is 0.183 feet from the x-axis, so going up along the y-axis. So what you might notice that this coordinate, this um, x-y coordinate here, is probably not going to land on this rod. It's probably going to be off this rod. And that's going to be the case for almost all of your rods and wires and line segments that you take the find the center of gravity of. And that's because um, very well. It's just because it just doesn't end up happening very often. Because if you were to plug in 0.531 into x here, you probably would not get um, 0.183 for y on this side in your equation. And so that would tell you that it's not going to be on your rod. So there's a pretty simple example problem of finding the center of gravity of a rod. Um, I've also got videos going over the finding the center of gravity for an area and also for a volume. If you want the one for the area, you can click on this video link. And if you want the videos for um, finding the center of mass or gravity for a volume, there's two different methods using the shell method or the disk method. I've got both of the videos down in the description, links to them. You can click on those to go to those videos or there will be links at the end of this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments and I will reply to them. Also down in the description, I've got some links to Amazon and Teespring where you can buy some merch from Student Engineering and buying that helps me a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.